Sound speeds, regardless of your gain staging, and if you work in any kind of a studio as either a voiceover artist or you record, let's say, bands for a living, you're probably familiar with this concept, and that is that when using dynamic microphones, you have to use a lot of gain in order to get a usable level out of them. That's just because of the nature of dynamic microphones. It requires a lot of gain. You may be familiar with a product called the Cloud Lifter, which is about $150, and what it does is it adds approximately 25 dB of clean gain to the signal. The way it does this is it uses phantom power and adjusts the impedance just a little bit in order to create that gain structure. But there's a company out of Holland and their name is Triton Audio and they have a whole line of products that adjust the gain depending on your needs. So if you want something similar to the cloud lifter and it adds about 22 dB of gain in much the same way, go for the fed head. If you have a condenser microphone, well, geez, you got to go for the Fedhead Phantom. And if you want to attenuate your audio, then you're going to go for the Airhead. But wait a second, back up, because today we're going to be testing the Fedhead Phantom, which works in much the same way as the Fedhead, except that it is for condenser microphones. Cool thing is, it is an XLR connector that connects up just to the bottom of your condenser microphone, and so you do not require any additional cables to connect it. But a product like the Fedhead Phantom needs to be tested because if you have a recorder like the Tascam DR40 or the Zoom H4n, and you drive a dynamic microphone too hard, you're going to introduce a lot of background hiss. It just cannot remain clean at the higher gain levels. As soon as you get up all the way up to the top, like at 10 or at whatever the top end gain is of those recorders, I don't know, then you are going to run into extra hiss. Whenever you start driving the preamps too hard, it's going to hiss. And that's pretty much on anything that is a low end recorder. So you might consider looking into something like this because in this case, the Fed Head Phantom is only around $100. Now, I got lucky here. Triton Audio sent me a box full of goodies to test and I'm choosing the Fed Head Phantom to start with. And no, I didn't buy it, but I definitely want you to see it because of what it could do do for you. Now, there's a lot of testing that we could do with the Fedhead Phantom, but let me tell you about what we're doing today. I'm going to take two AKG C4000B microphones. I use them for recording gunshots on the shows I work on, and we're going to set them up side by side. I've already pre-recorded six voiceovers, two male voices, one bass, one tenor, two female voices, one soprano, one alto, and two children's voices, one in the single digits, one in the double digits. And between those six voiceovers, saying the exact same random phrase, I'm going to be able to dial in on the vocal characteristics of pretty much any kind of level of voice that people are going to have. But before the voiceovers is 30 seconds of pink noise. Remember what we use pink noise for? Well, if you don't remember, then you need to check out this video right here. It will explain all. But what I did with this is I played the pink noise through and then the six voiceovers and recorded it with both of my microphones. Even two microphones that are identical in make and model number are going to vary a little bit in tonal quality. And that's just the nature of microphones and the manufacturing process. There's no perfection here at all. They're going to fluctuate a little bit. And when you plug in two microphones that are side by side and recording the same exact sound out of the speaker identically played every single time, which is the reason why it's pre-recorded, then you can put it into something like Voxingo Span in Reaper and overlay the two frequency spectrums. And all of a sudden you have an ironclad comparison between the two microphones. These two microphones right now are identical. They have the exact same gain and I don't have a fed head on either one of them. However, one of them is gonna be compared to the fed head and it's gonna remain constant and not move at all. The only difference is gonna be on the second microphone, I'm going to add the Fed head to the bottom. Now, when you look at this, the control microphone is the green one. The Fed head microphone is going to be the one that has a little reddish hue to it. Let's start by comparing these two microphones and looking at them on a frequency spectrum by themselves. Now, if I try to record room tone in a quiet environment like this and compare them, you're not going to see the meters move on the frequency spectrum. So what I chose to do is leave the door open to get the washing machine going and to leave the air conditioning on. So that way you you heard a little bit of something in the background. Check it out. The microphones themselves are not a perfect match. So notice here that on the pink microphone, there's a little more low end below 100 hertz than there is on the green microphone. By looking at and listening to the exact same 
sound at the exact same time, you know how these two microphones size up to each other. This is a control. They're both identical. Their settings are identical. Everything is identical on these two microphones, but their tonal quality is slightly different. But for our test today, we're going to use these two microphones, even though they're not a perfect balance. Now for both the control and the fed head version of this test, I recorded at three different audio levels, 65 dB, 75 dB, and 85 dB. I'm going to overlay all of them on the screen right now with the pink noise. There's not much difference at any audio level, 65, 75, or 85 dB, between the control and the fed head version. They're pretty identical. The frequency spectrum on this pink noise is pretty similar. And there's not very much difference depending on the volumes. Regardless, across the span of all of them, it did not sound that different. Here's the bass voice. The bass voice is very prominent. There's a lot of low end to it, but you don't see a whole lot of change going on here. Jack Dawes love my big sphinx of quartz. Jack Dawes love my big sphinx of quartz. Pack my box with five dozen liquor jugs. Pack my box with five dozen liquor jugs. The quick onyx goblin jumps over the lazy dwarf. The quick onyx goblin jumps over the lazy dwarf. How razorback jumping frogs can level six peaked gymnasts. How razorback jumping frogs can level six peaked gymnasts. They are still very much the same. It sounds very good on both of them. Here's the tenor voice. And as you can tell from the tenor voice, there's not much difference here either. Jack Dawes love my big sphinx of quartz. Jack Dawes love my big sphinx of quartz. Pack my box with five dozen liquor jugs. Pack my box with five dozen liquor jugs. Even with the female voices, when you listen to the alto voice. The quick onyx goblin jumps over the lazy dwarf. The quick onyx goblin jumps over the lazy dwarf. How razorback jumping frogs can level six peaked gymnasts. How razorback jumping frogs can level six peaked gymnasts. The same thing with the soprano voice. Jack Dawes love my big sphinx of quartz. Jack Dawes love my big sphinx of quartz. Pack my box with five dozen liquor jugs. Pack my my box with five dozen liquor jugs. Moving on to the double digit child. Jack does love my big sphinx of quartz. Jack does love my big sphinx of quartz. Pack my box with five dozen liquor jugs. Pack my box with five dozen liquor jugs. And the same holds true with the single digit child. The quick onyx goblin jumps over the lazy dwarf. The quick onyx goblin jumps over the lazy dwarf. How razorback jumping frogs can level six peaked gymnasts. How razorback jumping frogs can level six peaked gymnasts. It doesn't matter if it's a control or if it's the fed head version, it's going to be the same. Here's the trade-off though. Approximately 18 dB of clean gain for your condenser microphones in exchange for a modification of the impedance to around 3000 ohms. Usually it's fluctuating between about 75 and 250. No, it doesn't hurt your microphone at all. But sonically, if you can hear the difference and you're not willing to make that trade, then you can just simply gain up your microphone about another 18 decibels. Drive your preamp a little harder and then deal with the extra noise floor. But how much noise floor? Well, what do you say we save that for another test? Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Sound Speeds where we're testing the Fethead Phantom and stay tuned in the future for more sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.